Now we'll come to another type of transport across the cell membrane in which we will utilize energy. As we discussed early that extracellular environment is rich in sodium and intracellular environment is rich in potassium. Is that right? And we discussed why it happens. I was telling you that every cell membrane is rich in special type of transporter proteins and these proteins are called yes sodium potassium ATPases. Now what is the speciality of these proteins? These proteins are special type of carrier proteins right they are having three pockets here and they are having two pockets here. Now in this pocket it will bind sodium, sodium and sodium and here it will bind yes please potassium. So what really happens this is a very special type of protein which is inserted in the membranes of all cell right. What is the special point related with this protein that it has three, three domains on one side and two domains on other side. The three domains are usually hanging inside the cell and they love to bind sodium. They love to bind sodium and these domains which are hanging outside the cell they love to bind yes potassium. These are potassium binding domains. Usually it binds to potassium and these three are yes sodium binding domains. Usually they bind three molecules of sodium. When this molecule is loaded like this it opens a special pocket here. And in this pocket once this is loaded this is loaded it opens a special pocket and in this pocket what will fit in? ATP molecule. Now this domain of the molecule has capability to break down, down the ATP, ATP into ADP and phosphate and the molecule will be energized when you break down the ATP into ADP and phosphate. So what really happens we can say it will bind ATP and release out ADP and inorganic phosphate. And of course during this process what will be released? Energy will be released by the breakdown of ATP. That energy will be utilized by this special molecular motor or special protein molecule under the influence of that energy this will flip. And when it will flip it will move like this, twist like this. So what will happen? Sodium domains will go out and potassium domains will come yes in. So the new configuration of the molecule will be like this that now sodium domains are outside and potassium domains have flipped inside. As soon as sodium domains are outside they open and they release sodium. So three sodium will be transferred from intracellular environment and pumped into extracellular environment and these domains will also open and what will come out to potassium right. So what really happened this is a very special type of integral protein in the cell membranes. It is so universally present that this protein is present in every cell membrane is that right. What is the function of it that it, it is responsible to take the sodium pump the sodium out of the cell and pump the potassium into cell. We already know the sodium concentration outside the cell is very high and we know that potassium concentration is already present inside the cell in high concentration. So what does it mean? That this molecule has to pump the sodium from low concentration to high concentration. So it is pumping the molecules downhill or uphill? Uphill. And if you want to pull anything uphill you need to invest energy. energy. You are experienced right. So 
this molecule or this transporter is transporting the ions against the concentration gradient that sodium from intracellular environment is continuously being pumped to extracellular environment from low sodium concentration to high sodium concentration. At the same time, when three sodiums are pumped out, two potassiums are pumped from extracellular environment to the intracellular environment again against the concentration gradient of potassium. So we can say that this sodium potassium pump or we call it sodium potassium ATPase because it has capability to break down the ATP. So we call this enzyme, this component is enzymic. So we call it, this is working like an enzyme to break the ATP. So we also call it sodium potassium ATPase, right? So this sodium potassium ATPase or sodium potassium transporter is present in every cell and continuously throwing the sodium out of the cell and pumping the potassium into the cell so that it is responsible to maintain the high intra extracellular sodium concentration and high intracellular potassium concentration. Is that right? Am I clear? And these sodium potassium ATPases, as I told you, they are present in every cell. They utilize a large portion of your ATP. Is that right? So this is one example. Now, because substances are moved against the concentration gradient, so this is an example of active transport. It cannot be passive transport. And secondly, in any transport mechanism, when energy is utilized, that transport mechanism is said to be active transport. You know, simple diffusion was passive transport. Facilitated diffusion was passive transport. Because in simple diffusion and passive diffu uh, facilitated diffusion, substances are moving from high concentration to low concentration. But when we are talking about example of sodium potassium ATPases, they are moving the ions against the concentration gradient, right? So they have to utilize energy in the form of ATP. So sodium potassium ATPase and transfer of sodium to the outside of the cell and potassium into the cell is an example of active transport. Now, in this active transport mechanism, we are using the ATP directly at the transport site. ATP energy is utilized directly at the transport molecule or transport site. So we say input of energy is in, there is a direct input of energy in transporting mechanism. And whenever biologically energy is directly utilized in transporting mechanisms or transporting proteins, we say that this is, this is primary active transport. Again, let me tell you. Whenever we move substances against the electrochemical gradient, we say there's a mechanism of active transport. In active transport, we need to use energy. If energy is utilized directly at the site of transport, then we say there is primary active transport. So, this is not only an active transport, but energy is utilized at the site of transportation activity. So this should be called what type of, what type of active transport? Primary. Yes, primary active transport. Is that right? Any question up to this? Another example of primary active transport is, you may be knowing that within the cells, there is a network of tubes which is called endoplasmic reticulum. Now, if there is a lot of calcium in the cytoplasm, calcium should be pumped actively into endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum is a network of tubes, right, within the cell cytoplasm, right. And actually, they are very rich. These tubes are full of calcium. Whenever calcium come go, goes out of the endoplasmic reticulum, this calcium should be pumped back. And if calcium has to be pumped from cytosol back to endoplasmic reticulum, calcium is moving against the concentration gradient. So it has to be passive, passive transport or active transport? Active transport. And there is a calcium transporter here. There is a pump here which loves to move the calcium. And this pump, whenever it moves the calcium, it breaks down the ATP into ADP and inorganic phosphate. So this is also having an enzyme 
activity of ATPase. Now, this calcium transporter is pumping the calcium from cytosol to the endoplasmic reticulum from low concentration of calcium to the high concentration of the calcium. So, transportation of calcium is against the concentration gradient. So, it must be considered active transport. And in this active transport, because energy, biological energy is utilized by the transporting molecules directly, so it should be called primary active transport. And what should be the name of this protein? Calcium ATPase, as this was sodium potassium ATPase. Is that right? What is this? This calcium ATPase. Is that right? So these are two examples of what type of transport? Primary active transport. I think now it's important that we should talk about secondary active transport. Anyone is confused up to this? No one is confused? Anyone sleepy? Okay. Now we talk about what is secondary active transport. In secondary active transport, substances are transported across the membrane against the concentration gradient, but energy is not utilized directly at that very point. There is indirect utilization of energy. I think you don't understand anything. Let me take a help of a diagram. Then what is secondary active transport? Let's suppose there is lot of glucose here. Glucose molecules are here. We need to move these glucose molecules from this point up to this point. Right? Okay, I will give you a very simple example. Let's suppose this is your gastrointestinal system, GIT. It is your GIT, not anything else, please don't get confused. This is a cell, right? You have taken some Coca-Cola and I hope lot of glucose has gone in, right? Now, you want to take all this glucose inside the cell and you don't want to leave any glucose in the lumen. So when you will keep, when this cell will keep on taking up the glucose, glucose concentration in the cell may become high, but still it should keep on taking up the glucose. It means in the end it is taking the glucose against the concentration gradient. It means glucose eventually need to be pumped against the concentration gradient. Is that right? Now how it really happen? Let's suppose this cell I put here. Actually in this cell, this is called luminal side of the membrane. This is on the lumen and this is the basal side of the cell. Here are your friends. Who are these? Sodium, potassium, ATP pages. And these are the site of what activity? Primary active transport or secondary active transport? Primary active transport. Let me make it more clear. I'm making one cell of GAT here, right? Mm. This is luminal side and this is basolateral side, right? Of course, there are many cells, not one cell. Now, I said that on this side of the cell, what are these? Yes, please. Sodium, potassium, AT pages. They are taking the sodium against the concentration gradient outside and they are bringing the potassium inside. Is that right? Am I clear? The function of this sodium potassium AT pages is to keep the sodium concentration in the cell very high or very low? Low. low. And here sodium concentration very high. Is that right? Now we remove this cell at this level. Now this is your basal, what is this? Luminal membrane and this is your basolateral. And because this pump is working here, it is keeping the intracellular sodium level very low. Is that right? Now, from here, it has to take what in? Glucose. Now, there are very special type of transporters present on this side. I will draw these transporters here. These are very special type of transporters which are responsible to transport the glucose. Let me make one transporter big here. Let's suppose this transporter is here, right? Now this transporter protein 
has two pockets in one pocket it can bind glucose in one pocket it can bind glucose and in other pocket it can bind sodium if listen if only glucose bind this transporter will not work if only sodium bind it does not work this transporter protein can only be active when sodium binding domain and glucose binding domain both of them are appropriately loaded is that right if both of them are loaded this protein will flip inside right its next configuration will be like this right so sodium will be released in as well as yes glucose will be also released inside now what we have seen that this is a protein which can transport sodium and glucose together this is an example of co transporter this type of transporters are called co transporter it is sodium glucose co transporter or some people simply call such type of transporters sim port sim port or co or co transporters so there are many types of co transporters here i have given an example of sodium and glucose co transporter now this co transporter can take the sodium and glucose from the extracellular environment and bring them to intracellular environment now in this example sodium is going down the concentration gradient from high concentration to low and glucose is moving yes from low concentration to high concentration even if you have accumulated lot of glucose here still it will keep on pumping the glucose in now glucose is moving from low concentration to high concentration because last molecule of glucose will be also sucked up so is it an active transport or passive transport is it a glucose is transported against the concentration gradient or with the concentration gradient it is against the concentration gradient glucose is transported downhill or uphill uphill, uphill. uphill. so it is passive transport or active transport active. active transport it is active transport of glucose it is active transport of glucose is that right but it is facilitated diffusion of sodium sodium is moving from high concentration to low concentration so this concept is little bit complex but i hope your complex mind will understand it right that same transporter is moving once from substance down the concentration gradient and other substance up the concentration gradient so the substance which is going down the concentration gradient is sodium and presence of this carrier has facilitated the moving movement of diffusion of sodium from high concentration to low concentration so we'll say sodium glucose tra co transporter is transporting the sodium as an example of facilitated diffusion and transporting the glucose an example of active transport but do you think any direct energy is utilized here atp no because atp is not utilized here so it is not primary active transport but from where the energy comes for transportation of glucose now this is a very important question because glucose is trans being transported <coughs> from low concentration to high concentration so it is active transport there must be some input of energy but atp is not directly utilized there so it cannot be primary, primary active transport so what kind of transport is it let me tell you actually this transporter will keep on working until inside the cell sodium concentration is low sodium gradient outside the cell should be high and sodium concentration inside the cell should be low so this sodium gradient right is produced by utilization of atp by this pump this pump was 
whatever sodium is coming in, it is this pump is actively throwing out. So this pump is utilizing the energy, sodium potassium AT pages are utilizing the energy to keep the intracellular sodium concentration very low and when sodium diffuse from high concentration to low concentration, energy which is released is utilized by this transporter protein to drag the glucose from low concentration to high concentration. The classical example to prove that this mechanism is using the energy of this is that scientist did made this channel, this uh, transporter dysfunctional. There is a substance called obane, a toxic substance called obane. They exposed the cell, exposed the cells to obane. Uh, obane will especially made this part dysfunctional. And as soon as this, this cell will be exposed to the obane, sodium potassium ATP is stop working, stop utilizing the ATP and intracellular sodium level will start going up. And when intracellular sodium level will go up, this sodium will not come in. And if the sodium cannot come in, this glucose cannot also come in. So this was an excellent proof that energy which is primarily used here right, is actually utilized to keep the intracellular sodium down. This energy is indirectly responsible, right, to actively transport the glucose, right. So this sodium glucose transporter or co-transporter is moving the glucose from low concentration to high concentration as active transport mechanism. but this active transport mechanism is not having the biological energy input directly into this transport mechanism. Biological energy is utilized somewhere else. So it is having indirect energy utilization. So we call it secondary, secondary active transport mechanism. Am I clear? What is this? Secondary active transport mechanism. Another example of secondary active transport mechanism is that there are some other type of transporters present here. On one side, they can bind sodium and on other pocket, they can bind amino acids. And when both of them are loaded, it will flip in. Sodium will go down the concentration gradient and amino acid will go up the concentration gradient. So it means in the gastrointestinal system, sodium and glucose co-transportation or sodium and amino acid co-transportation are example of secondary active transport. Am I clear? Any question up to this? So is there any, you are clear what is simple diffusion? Simple diffusion does not utilize any proteins. Facilitated diffusion is from high concentration to low concentration, but utilization of special protein, but no energy is utilized. Right? In facilitated diffusion, there were carrier proteins, transporters or there were channels, you know glucose transporters were there and ion channels were there. Then we were talking about primary active transporters where energy is utilized in moving the substances or molecules against the concentration gradient, is that right? And in primary active transport, the transporting mechanisms are utilizing the ATP directly at the site of transporting mechanism. In secondary active transport, substances are moved from low concentration to high concentration but they are transported in association with another molecule which is going down the concentration gradient. Is that right? The classical example of secondary active transport is so glucose sodium co-transportation or sodium and amino acid co-transportation. There are some other cells in the body, they also utilize similar mechanism. I will show you those cells are having some transporter and on one side they can, these transporter can bind sodium and but inside the cell they can bind proton. Now listen carefully. This is another transporter but uh, it has, it is different than those two. These transporters were having sodium and glucose, both of them were taken from outside and transported inside. So this was an example of co-transportation. But this transporter has two domain, one extracellular domain, other intracellular domain. Extracellular domain binds 
sodium intracellular domain binds proton and then sodium comes down its concentration gradient right and when it will flip what will move out what will move out proton will move out and even if there is high concentration of proton outside still this will keep on pumping the proton out until sodium can move in this is another example of what type of transport protons are moved against the concentration gradient so this is an example of active transport but ATP is not directly utilized here so what is this secondary, secondary active transport another important thing can it be co-transport no in co-transport two things should move in the same direction here the two molecules are moving in opposite direction these are called counter transport what is it called this is an example of counter transport or such molecules are called anti ports anti ports these co-transporters were sim ports you remember they were sim ports and these are anti ports so secondary active transport mechanisms are those mechanisms in which two molecules are moved across the membrane and energy is utilized indirectly right if both molecules are moving in the same direction then these mechanisms are called sim ports or co-transporters if both molecules are moving in opposite direction these are called counter transports or anti ports am i really clear 